NERF, or Neural Radiance Fields, is a popular neural view synthesis technique based on volume rendering. It uses a neural network to output the density of 3D points along a ray and the color of light emitted by those points towards the camera, and alpha composites them to get the overall color of the ray. Top-performing NERF-based models, like MIBNERF, shown here, are able to represent complex geometry and render novel views that look quite convincing for a fast-moving camera. But in more realistic settings where the viewer doesn't move so quickly, it becomes clear that NERF is unable to accurately represent and render shiny surfaces with specular highlights and reflections. For this chrome ball, MIPNERF poorly approximates reflections as semi-transparent clouds that appear and disappear between different views. Our model, which we call RefNERF, fixes NERF's failure to correctly represent view-dependent appearance and produces much more realistic and accurate renderings of specular reflections, which are crucial for realistic view synthesis. Our model's advantage over previous approaches is even more obvious in scenes with glossy objects like this car. Our method successfully produces realistic specularities that move on the surface, whereas MIPNERF's reflections are extremely foggy and inconsistent. Let's look a bit more closely at why NERF fails to represent shiny surfaces. Here's a simple toy example of a reflective ball with a spatially varying roughness. If you train MIPNERF on 100 images of this ball, here's what it recovers. The specular reflections appear as fog that fades in and out, rather than sharp reflections that move smoothly across the surface. Rendering the scene from back to front reveals what's causing this issue. NERF is representing specular reflections as glowing emitters that shine through a foggy surface instead of correctly replicating the view-dependent appearance of points on the surface. One of the reasons NERF does this is because it represents outgoing radiance as a function of view direction. Let's look at the true outgoing radiance for a moving point on the ball marked in orange for every viewing direction. This is the spatially varying outgoing color as a function of view direction that NERF needs to learn with a checkerboard pattern signifying invisible directions that go into the surface. Even for this simple shape, this function changes rapidly and is difficult for a network to approximate and interpolate. One of our key contributions is to use the normal vector at each 3D point and reparameterize outgoing radiance as a function of the reflection of the view direction about the normal. This reparameterization makes the underlying function simpler and easier for the network to interpolate. Now it only changes when the orange point moves into the rougher regions of the ball, for which the underlying reflected radiance function is blurred. We introduce a technique that allows the network to easily represent the blurring of outgoing radiance for points with different roughnesses. First, we predict a scalar roughness at any 3D location, which defines a Gaussian-like distribution over reflection directions at that point. Shiny materials have a concentrated distribution of reflection directions, and rough materials have a wider distribution, corresponding to blurrier specularities. We propose to encode the distribution of reflection directions as the expected value of a set of spherical harmonics under that distribution, which we call an integrated directional encoding. Our integrated directional encoding has an intuitive behavior. The encodings for smoother regions have more high frequencies as we see in the bottom row. For rougher materials with wider distributions, these high frequencies are attenuated, which results in the network producing a smoother view-dependent outgoing radiance. Our proposed reflection direction reparameterization relies on having accurate normal vectors. But as we saw before, NERF's geometry is extremely foggy, and the normal vectors computed from its volume density are therefore unusable. Looking at a single ray passing through the object, the density repeatedly goes up and down, and as a result, the normal vectors point in alternating directions. We apply a novel regularizer that discourages this and produces significantly more accurate normals. It also reduces fogginess by producing weights that are more concentrated around the surface. Looking at a back-to-front rendering of the same scene using our method shows that it no longer hides emitters inside the object, resulting in significantly better normals and renderings. Now let's take a look at some more results and comparisons. 
VolSDF, a recent method that uses a hybrid surface and volume representation, is able to capture smooth surfaces but lacks fine geometric detail. On the other hand, MIPNERF can represent detailed geometry but struggles to render specularities like on this plant spot. Our method renders consistent specularities while also preserving fine details. Here is another challenging example of a shiny teapot, where we see that MIPNERF renders cloudy specularities while ours moves smoothly over the surface. We also see our methods benefit in real captured scenes. Notice how reflections off these shiny objects appear cloudy in MIPNERF's rendering, while our renderings contain sharp reflections of the tree. In this example of a toy car, our model renders realistic reflections on the car's windshield. Furthermore, our methods extracted normal vectors accurately capture the underlying geometry. Our method also structures outgoing radiance in a way that enables us to convincingly edit scene appearance after training. Here, we increase the scene's roughness, resulting in a change in the perceived shininess of the objects. We can even decrease the roughnesses of objects in the scene, making them appear shinier. Here we modify the car's diffuse color without changing its specular color. Note that the color of the reflections remains the same. We can also manipulate the amount of diffuse and specular color to alter the perceived material properties. See our paper for more details and thanks for listening.